Hello everyone, I'm Paul McGuire Grimes. The fourth film in a horror franchise usually yields lackluster results. Let us not forget that Leprechaun 4 was set in outer space, and Halloween 4 isn't even one of my favorites in that franchise. But leave it to the return of screenwriter Kevin Williamson and legendary director Wes Craven to make Scream 4 a thrilling and smart sequel. This is Paul's trip to the movies and the first part of me look back at the Scream franchise. Now let's go back a bit. Scream 3 saw the end of what was thought of as a trilogy back in 2000. We saw some closure for Sidney Prescott, but it came with some disappointing elements. More on that in my review of that movie. It's now 10 years later, and Nev Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox are all back in action on set reprising their roles, and Scream 4 was released in April 2011. Fans like myself were eager with anticipation. The Scream movies were known, are known for their killer opening sequences, and Scream 4 nailed it out of the park, as we saw a montage of the Stab movies. Now, this was the movie within a movie that, we was, that was first introduced in Stab 2. We get to see Anna Paquin, Kristen Bell, Britt Robertson, and more meet their destiny with Ghostface as they lash out at bad sequels. It's an ultra-meta commentary that serves up what's to come. Now, this is the perfect setup for the fourth entry. If Scream was Kevin Williamson's fanboy appreciation for horror movies like Psycho and Halloween, then Scream 4's commentary is on everything good and bad that happened that came after Scream. Our heroine, Sidney Prescott, is on a book tour, which takes her back to her hometown of Woodsboro, where the original murders took place. Scream 2 took our characters to Windsor College, and Scream 3 saw them in Hollywood. Sydney's cousin, Jill, played by Emma Roberts, lives in Wordsboro along with Deputy Dewey Riley and uh, Gail, reporter Gail, who know the slices and dices of Ghostface all too well. Sydney's arrival also means the arrival of Ghostface. Now, the body count in Scream 4 is pretty high and relentless. I love that Wes Craven really plays into that approach that everybody's a suspect. We saw him play that up in the first film, and does it again here when characters pop up shortly after the killer strikes, leading you from one direction to the next. And what's great about the Scream movies is that there's a different killer in each movie of who dons the ghost face costume. We also don't know if there's going to be one killer or two. It's great to have Kevin Williamson's uh, back writing that script after stepping aside for Scream 3. His writing is wicked smart and gives that updated take on the horror genre that I mentioned earlier. His humor and bite are what makes these movies so much fun. I want to show one of my favorite scenes from Scream 4 that has Hayden Panettiere's character Kirby remind the killer just how much she knows about the genre. Let him go, please. I hear you like horror movies, Kirby, but do you like them as much as him? Forget watching Stab. You get to live it. No, 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 no. He's the expert. It's not me. Warm-up question. Jason's weapon. Uh, it's a machete. There, you see, you do know the genre. Michael Myers. Uh, butcher knife. Leatherface. Uh, chainsaw, please. Just ask Sydney if you need some help. Freddy Krueger. Uh, uh, raise your hands. Name the movie that started the slasher craze. Halloween, mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House on the Left, or Psycho? Psycho. None of the above. Peeping Tom, 1960, directed by Michael Powell. First movie to ever put the audience in the killer's POV. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Please, just ask me one more question, just one more. All right, Kirby. Then it's time for your last chance question. Name the remake of the groundbreaking horror movie in which the villain... Halloween, uh, Texas Chainsaw, Dawn of the Dead, The Hills Have Eyes, Amityville Horror, uh, Last House on the Left, Friday the 13th, and A Nightmare on Elm Street, My Bloody Valentine, When a Stranger Calls Prom Night, Black Christmas, House of Wax, The Fog, uh, Piranha. It's one of those, right? Right? Pantera was a great addition to the new cast, along with Emma Roberts, Nico Tortatella, and Rory Culkin. But for me, it was far more exciting to reunite with our three main original cast members, played by Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette. 
all three of them seamlessly slid back into their roles as if no time had passed. Now, this can't always be sad for actors returning to beloved roles in reunion or revival projects. Campbell continues to make Sydney a fighter, ready to step into action and protect her cousin Jill uh, from Ghostface. Courtney Cox's fourth outing as Gail gets right back in action as she's trying to stop Ghostface by using her journalistic eye and then pairs with this uh, couple of students from the high school cinema club. Dewey will always be dual thanks to David Arquette's comedic chops. Scream 4 has a really thrilling ending, which I'm not about to spoil here, but I will say that I was cheering loudly in my seat, knowing that Wes, Kevin, and his cast had successfully made another badass Scream movie. Since then, uh, we've seen a successful Scream TV series on MTV that came with brand new characters and a new look for Ghostface, and that word has it that Scream 5 is in the works, and it appears to actually be a continuation of the franchise movies. Nav Campbell broke the news that she is in conversations with directors Matthew Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette about returning. She was a little bit hesitant knowing that Wes Craven would obviously not be involved anymore, but she feels optimistic about the direction and the vision that they have. David Arquette and Courtney Cox have both officially signed on for Scream 5. The Scream movies have proven to be one of the best horror franchises of, horror franchises of all times, so financially and artistically. Now, don't forget to click subscribe on my YouTube channel as I'm going to be looking back at all four of the Scream movies. Um, it'll be a mix of reviews, some spoilers, and trips down memory lane for my love of this franchise. Next to Halloween, it really is just one of my favorite scary movie franchises. If you're a Scream fan, I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Paul's Movie Trap. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your favorite characters, some of your favorite kills? Uh, write me back. I'd love to hear from you. And then go to my website, paulstriptothemovies.com, for even more reviews, as well as my Halloween retrospective. Thank you so much for watching my look back at Scream 4. This is Paul's Trip to the Movies.